three, two, one. Yo, what it is, YouTube? It's your boy, Missy, coming back with another boys I have a tutorial today on the channel so I wanted to do little baby rev 2 part 2 yeah revision 2 one of the very first videos on my channel was the little baby vocal tutorial and at the time you know the tutorial sounds exactly like how you know how I do I riffed it 100 percent I remember I sent that template to some of my friends and they was like whoa, whoa, whoa. Is, is that little baby like that was like the first time when i started to build some confidence with my vocal tutorials knowing i could bring something new to the game right rather than all of those other whoop -de whoops i always see all the time so this is the um me doing redoing little baby again because in that first video i feel like i i wasn't me i wasn't myself at that point in time where i could take off on the camera and explain everything so perfectly like how i do so i wanted to do little baby's uh sound justice and you know he we released another album so if you guys are interested in this uh, vocal template you'll see the link down below and if you got any more questions go ahead and drop it or any more artist suggestions i'm more than happy to get to it let's not waste no time let's get on the grind and listen yeah yeah i it's your draco call it wish you nigga one it got one on it she did and she special but i'm gonna Drake, I'll call it wish you nigga one. It got wood on it. She didn't have she special, but I'm good. Won't be in. Ain't no feeling like I'm posting everything I say I stun on it. Ooh, I did it again. Okay, so I'm really happy to bring you guys this little baby vocal mainstream melodic auto tune swag that we got here today. These gems we about to be dropping. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you guys do like the content. And also, I just recently dropped my Patreon. The free course is coming this month, but I actually dropped my Patreon where I'm going to be putting out some paid courses. I got an incredible mix breakdown. If you guys want to check it down, uh, the link will be there too in the description box. Let's listen to what this sounds like uh, with and without. I, I think I'm going to start off with the auto-tune first. Yeah, yeah. I shine your scene, nigga, again. It's your Draco call it wish, nigga, one. It got one on it. She didn't have she special, but I'm gonna. And I'm really like I'm posting everything I say yeah. I stun on it. Yeah. I saw you on city looking good. It's your drink, I'll call it wish and nigga wood. It got wood on it. She didn't have she special, but I'm good. Oh, yeah. Ain't no feeling like I'm posting everything I say I stun on it. Okay, now let's what it hear what it sounds like without the actual, you know, vocal chain and everything like that. Just so, the, the, you know, there's some of my doubters who they're like, whoa, maybe it already sounded, sounded good right out the gate. No, we don't make no excuses around here. I'm going to show you how to take that bedroom vocal into something that's pro mainstream. It's 2023. So we have all the technology we need nowadays to get it to sound good. But sometimes you just need somebody to help you. Somebody who genuinely likes making music to take some time and help you. And that's what I'm here for. Let's listen to what it sound like with and without the template itself. Yeah, yeah. I shine your scene, nigga, again. It's your Draco call it wish you nigga, one. It got one on it. She didn't have she special, but I'm good on it. And I'm really like I'm posting everything I say I stun on it. I shine your scene, nigga, again. It's your drink, I'll call it wish and nigga one. It got wood on it. She didn't have she special, but I'm good. Oh, yeah. Ain't no feeling like I'm posting everything I say I stun on it. Okay, so let's see how we were able to do this. The very first thing I always think about little baby's vocal is it's very unique. He has kind of like, how can I say, a little vocal, like little baby's vocal kind of reminds me of a duck a little bit. It sounds like he's always quacking and quacking, you know? So that's kind of like when I'm looking to emphasize something like that here. I use something like the R channel, which is an incredible combination of the REQ, the RVox, the RCOM, all of those plugins that are really, those are timeless plugins. I ain't gonna lie, that, that Renaissance, um, you know, compressor series. I feel like those are kind of like stock plugins because they're like the most basic bare bones plugins. So if you're a beginning beginner, I would try to start using the Renaissance plugins just to get a feel of what the basic EQ compression is and just the way like everything looks. It makes it so easy. But I love this plugin. So let's look at our EQ move that we did. First of all, you know, just rolling off a little of that bottom of little baby's vocal, trying to see like how 
where do I want the vocal to sit? You know, usually with the low end, it's all about the forward to back ratio. You know, your ear already understands this stuff, you know, and as well as boosting a little bit of presence. I was kind of like a doctor with one of those little, what is it called? Like little scope things that they put around your heart. Like, kind of trying to locate where is that character of little baby's voice? Where's the quack quack, the honk honk, the aflac duck inside a little baby's vocal? Because that's that's what his vocal hands, that little quack, little gun. It has that little quack. So any artist that comes into the studio, I always like when I talk to them, I'm literally starting to listen to their voice, like their real voice. It's like, okay, this person's voice has like a snicker or this or that. So by the time I'm mixing it, I already know that's like the main attribute of the human, how they communicate. So because I want the vocal to communicate to the audience a certain way, I'm going to push that out. You feel me? So let's look at it with and without. Yeah, yeah. I your singing again. It's your Draco Collie wishing nigga one. It got one on it. She did that she special when I'm gone on it. And I'm really like I'm posting everything I should have done on it. I saw you on city looking gun. It's your Draco Collie wishing nigga one. It got one on it. She did that she special when I'm gone on it. And I'm really like I'm posting everything I should have done on it. So we got to understand that basic, basic EQ, like this lower register right here is usually about the distance. How forward do you want the vocals to sound? You hear, pay attention to it. actually when I was bypassing in and out, not only did it sound cleaner, okay, we know it can make it sound cleaner, but literally actually we'll push little baby back a little bit into the music. It kind of sounded a little bit more glued because of how we rolled off that lower spectrum and of course bringing up the quack. After that, I used like a little bit of the Arvox um, compressor and I love it because it brings some of that presence. With the R channel, it's a little bit better because you get the control the attack and release of the rvox usually on the regular rvox you can't control that but this is why you know i picked this plugin specifically because i wanted that big body compression to give little baby a little bit of presence to cut through that 808 so you can still hear that vocal with all the character and all the life and everything like that you know but still not the 808 overpowering it being like that little bully in preschool pushing it around taking his legos from it and everything like that in the snack you know so that's why i use the rvox to help it give some balls you know they wish you nigga one, they got one on it. She did that she special when I'm gone on it. And I'm really like I'm posting everything I should have done on it. I saw you on city looking gun. And she drank out call it wish you nigga one. It got one on it. She did that she special when I'm gone on it. And I'm really like I'm posting everything I That's why compression is not about taming peaks. If I, you know, if I was to see it only like as in Taming Peaks, you know, like usually if you get a decent recording from a decent rapper, decent rappers, they know how to control like their words and stuff like that. They like they know how to keep it at an even distance. You know, some words have more energy than others. But still, though, you know, like for the most part, compression is not about Taming Peaks. That's the stupidest shit ever. After that, we had a de a high shelf rolling up everything above 5K. Nothing crazy. Understanding that a lot of little babies vocal presence in a lot of his character is in that upper tier so i don't want to be too aggressive and take it away because i want his vocal to cut through but if i'm thinking oh i gotta use the de-esser for only harshness and i'm pushing it like six maybe ten or over de-essing and i can start to lose a little bit of that edge a little bit of those scissors a little bit of that 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 chef cooking knife that will help it cut through you know the meat so let's look at that real quick they wish you nigga one it got one on it she did that she special when i'm gone on it and I'm really like I'm posting everything I should have done on oh, it. Yeah. I saw you on city looking gun. It's your Draco Collie wishing nigga one. It got water on it. She didn't she special, but I'm gone. Oh, yeah. And I'm no really like I'm posting everything I should have done on it. So I'm very generous, very generous with this one because it's like a high shelf. This is working at everything between 5K and up. So after that, another great plugin that I used here was the C6. So I kind of use this as my D mutter, my D harsher, kind of using these little resonant bands. You know, when people go to the beach and they're like looking for like those rocks and those stones under the, the, the beach and stuff like that. They have like that little metal detector shit. They're looking for a nickel where I'm kind of looking for that bad stuff that inside a little baby's vocal, if there is um, that much much you know but everyone kind of has that little you know that low mid kind of like you know I'm, I'm under the weather type of honk i need some night cool type of honk inside of their voice a little bit like i'm not feeling too good everybody got that shit in their voice and then after that everybody kind of has that little little you know that little type of you know cutting especially for rap vocals where there's a lot of consonants i could have should have cut like rap is usually a genre where people have a lot of consonants those have a lot of energy you know so we want those because when you do it the right way in rap it sounds really good the vocal sounds punchy it sounds like a boxer it sounds like javante davis you know hitting and swinging but 
oftentimes, you know, we don't want to pierce the ear. So I like to use something like dynamic processing here. And with the higher spectrum, I always use a fast attack because higher frequencies are faster with a faster release. But usually for the lower um, spectrum, you know, I still had a fast attack, but the release was a little bit slower. So I, as soon as it hears that honk, I wanted to grab it right away. You know what I mean? I wanted to grab that honky frequency right away. So let's listen to it with and without. She Draco call it with some nigga one It got one on it She did that she special but I'm gun on it And I'm feeling like I'm posting everything I see is done on it I saw you say it looking good It should Draco call it with some nigga one It got one on it She did that she special but I'm gun on it And I'm feeling like I'm posting everything I see is done on it so when I get started up on this, you know, I always, um, you know, bypass everything else. And I only use just these uh, two, two free foam bands. These are free, free floating bands, essentially. Um, and you could do this with like any active EQ, like F6 or anything like that. But usually I like solo it and I kind of just look for it like I'm a doctor, you know. Yeah, what we have. So it's always a situation like that where I'm I'm looking for that low mid, and that's the beautiful thing about it. You have the solo button. You just mute the beat and you solo it. And sometimes if you hear a honky frequency and you just you just can't locate it by your ear, I would usually tell you to play it with the beat because sometimes you think it's a honky frequency until you bring in the beat and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa it's a completely different thing. So I, sometimes if you know if you really really can't hear, your ears are not trained. Mute the beat and then pay attention to where you hear that little resonant frequency because there always is a, re a little resonant frequency and just notch it out a little bit. Some people like to use a static EQ, but me personally, I still know that uh, he's saying different words and different words have a different amount of power. Some rappers, they might do a take like this and then the other ones, you know, they're coming in and out and they're moving around too when they're rapping and stuff like that. So sometimes they're saying a certain set of words and that low mid resonance isn't even there. So that's why I prefer to use a C6 over like a static cut. But you can do whatever the hell you want. It's music. There's no rules. After that, we have the R comp. I absolutely love this. Using a little bit of that low level compression. So uh, with this low level compression, pretty much the ratio is extremely low. Because the ratio is so low, it's letting me work on the whole body of the vocal, which is helping just pull everything forward. It's kind of like when you had a JIT and you're kind of like at the arcade and everything like that and you're trying to grab that little toy. Sometimes in order for you to grab grab that toy it's a lot easier for you to take the crane hand and put it inside the middle so you could just hopefully grab something you might grab two toys but if you try to grab one that's in the corner specifically it's going to be a lot harder for you so that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to like tonally balance this whole vocal i use a very light ratio and i put my my my, my hammer the little crane all the way inside of the pot you feel me you see how the threshold is all the way down here if you you feel us to make the ratio even more it wouldn't even let you do that it, like it would start compressing more on that that, that surface level you know what i mean so you guys get the main idea of kind of just really collecting everything forward uh you know that compressor for me really is kind of like the gorilla glue really just helping the whole uh structure of little baby's vocals just sticky you feel me that's the word i think about after that i use the kramer uh tape i love this preset 15 ips vox ds or you know sometimes people like little baby who have that little quack that little that little tip the little stutters inside of their mouth like they twitching and everything sometimes certain words could come off harsh so i like to use something like a uh you know tape uh to kind of give like a, a layer of smoothing kind of like uh i don't know how to say like a, a layer of frosting around the cake the sweetness is already kind of like in the middle but now I'm going to use a little bit of that frosting from that analog tape to really just smooth everything out it, getting it sound really nice and sweet and smooth. So let's look. Yeah. 
I also love the Kramer master tape as well because of this flux button. So this lets you actually control how much tape compression you're getting. The only real plugins I can ever think of or gear is like the Fatso, like the Empirical Labs Fatso. That lets you like visualize the tape, press, tape compression. But the Kramer tape is pretty dope. You get to control how much of just the tape compression you're getting using a little bit of tape compression as well to, uh, you know, really just get a tone out of little baby's vocal. After that, I use something like the SSLG because he rapping about that screedy. I'm trying to shame again. Good. He know he talking his shit. So I want it to be a little dirty, a little bit gritty. I don't want it to be pretty because, you know, AT Atlanta, how little baby grew up and all that stuff. It wasn't pretty. You know, he had to get it out the mud. He had to get it out the dirt. So if the artist is saying that, that is my red alert. Bring, bring, bring. My my goddamn red alert that I need to make it sound like what the artist is trying to project. It's like if you go to a fair or some shit, you know, sometimes at a, at a fair, you know, if you guys have festivals, like they come down over here to like Pompano all the time and stuff like that. Pompano Beach, Florida and like Fort Lauderdale and all stuff like they're usually like a guy who will do like a portrait of you. You know what I mean? Like you'll sit there and he'll do like literally like a quick portrait of you. We all know that. So that's literally what being an engineer is like. A motherfucker coming into the studio trying to rap about their problems, trying to rap about the shit that they got going on. And it's your responsibility to really just like, you know, take that paintbrush, which is your mouse and your computer and shit. And, you know, go into your DAW and really just paint out what they're like, what they're trying to the idea they're trying to get off. You know, so then they can take that painting, which is also like that song and put it out into the world and be like, yo, does this look like me? Does this feel like me? Does this sound like me? And people could be like, damn, I can relate to that shit because that's real. You feel me? People can't relate to stuff that's fake. You know, so I use the SSLG because it makes it sound a little bit more believable of what he's saying. Special when I'm gone. And don't really like I'm pushing everything I should have done. Oh, yeah. I saw you say it looking good. It's your Drake, I'll call it wishing ain't gonna work. It got water on it. She did yeah, she's special, but I'm good. Oh, yeah. Ain't no feeling like I'm posting everything I say I stunned. I also just love how that gate is also bringing out a little bit of that consonance, a little bit of the transitions in between his words, those gusts of air, the <laughs> all of that low level detail. The gate is actually bringing that in. Some people use gates to, you know, literally like mute the background noise, but I see gates in a different way. Like I see the gate in like how how tight do I want to tighten this shirt? You know, because usually if you tighten up your shirt a little bit, it's gonna make you squeeze yourself a little bit. You know, like how much do I want to squeeze the shirt of of the rapper while he's rapping so I can get some a little bit more of that impact, a little bit more of that cut inside of his vocal. You feel me? So yeah, I use the expander. This is the gate, but this is also the expander. Kind of like the same thing cutting out a little bit of that mid-range just little baby's voice his va his voice is not deep so the processing is always different it's never a preset that just work on anything after that we had the nls bus of course to just bring in a little bit of that brightness i love this console emulation for little baby uh just because it has like a smoothing characteristic all that quack 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 i don't want it to be annoying sometimes if you have somebody who got a high voice and you start doing that extra auto tune like NBA young boy or even little baby type of vocals, then you're gonna hear that tick, tick, like, like all that little twitching from the actual vocal. The tune is gonna like tune it and it's gonna start to become a little bit sharp, you know? It's gonna start to become a little bit annoying. So that's why I use these uh constant emulations to smoothen out everything, you know? Special when I'm gone. And don't really like I'm posting everything I should have done. Oh, yeah. I saw you on shit looking gun. It's your Drake, I'll call it wishing you gonna work. It got what special when I'm gone. And don't really like I'm posting everything I should have done. Oh, yeah. I saw you on set and looking good. It's your Drake, I'll call it wishing you gon' work. It got water on it. She didn't she's special, but I'm good. Oh, yeah. Ain't no feeling like I'm posting everything I should have done. So you hear what I'm talking about, that pushing and shine. Like those specific words kind of start to sound a little bit annoying, especially with auto-tune. So I use the NLS bus like a ghost de essentially. So it's kind of like smoothing out my vocal and all that stuff, but um, not doing it through like actual de you know. Um, so doing it through saturation, like the curve or the waveform and all that shit. So after that, we have the fresh air. And this is just like my mainstream vocal brightener. Be special when I'm gonna and don't feel it like I'm posting everything I should have done. Oh, yeah. I saw you on set and looking good. It's your Drake, I'll call it wishing you gon' work. It got water on it. She did yeah, she's special, but I'm good. Oh, yeah. All uh, right, so then we're going to run through the effects really quickly. I know my haters are going to be like, oh my God, why did you show me the delay and the reverb? Look. That shit doesn't make no difference. I'm going to keep saying it. A delay or reverb is not going to make or break your song. So after that, we have the Kramer tape. I'm using it on the slap mode, 7.5 IPS. 
Um, after that, we have like a stock, a stock reverb, uh, the R verb, and especially with with a song like this where the piano already has reverb, like literally, that tells my brain like I do not need no reverb on my vocal, damn near, because there's only so much water that you can put inside of a water bottle. Similarly to a mix, you can only put so much water, which is reverb and effects, inside of a mix. Every mix has a finite amount of space. You see how this water bottle, I can't put a whole goddamn gallon inside of it. So if I hear a, a beat where the beat has like reverb, delay, and all that stuff that's gonna wash it away, and metaflanger, you know, all that stuff like that, I'm not gonna uh, take it upon myself to be like, ah, I need a special reverb. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell myself, yo, you gotta do less work, man. Like the reverb and the wetness is already there. Don't stress yourself out. So I, I did have a little metaflanger too, just to give the vocal a little bit of wobble, nothing crazy, nothing really even important. Uh, after that, we have the doubler here, just to give a little bit more dimension to Lil Baby's lead vocal. And the last thing that I think is noteworthy is using uh, something like this, you know, the R compressor. The preset I love to use is vocal rap squash. And just the way the beat is hitting so hard, a little bit of parallel compression is incredible. Just to tell the listener that, hey, the vocal is here, you know, and every single word is coming through. Special when I'm gonna Everything I yeah. see is done I, I saw you on city looking good It's your drink, I'll call it wish and nigga wood It got wood on it, she did that she special but I'm good on it Ain't no feeling like I'm posting everything I see I stun on it I love using the L1 limiter at the back end because it brings in some of that digital distortion. The L1 limiter was like a really historic limiter at the time because, I mean, usually with digital limiting, people, like, when people were doing masters and certain stuff like that, sometimes they even have to go in there and, like, ride certain peaks down and stuff like that. So the L1 was, like, a digital limiter that just was just so good. And I feel like this thing is so damn transparent. The reason why I put it on my parallel compressor all the time is because it adds a new flavor. Digital distortion. Some people hate digital distortion. They say, ah, you should never use it. But even with my video right now, I'm distorting. I'm just like, yeah, you see my little red shit. I'm actually distorting, but you, you can't really tell, though, you know, because, you know, it's a certain type of digital distortion and everything like that. Like, I have my, my stuff going through, like, an analog plug-in and some stuff like that and some hardware that is smoothing it out while I'm talking to you guys on YouTube. So you got to know how to mix digital distortion and analog distortion together. It's kind of like if you're making a pot of soup, but then you put in, like, that certain, certain type of pepper or that certain, certain type of ingredient like paprika or something like turmeric or some shit like that. And certain people, even if you put just a little bit of it inside of it, people are going to be able to taste it because the, the taste is so strong. So that's the same way I feel about the L1 and digital distortion. Digital distortion is something that has like a really powerful taste. But if you blend a little bit of inside of it, a little bit of that spice, it will, uh, you know, be very good and everything. OK, so the last thing I want to look at real fast is the ad libs. you know, nothing crazy. Use a little bit of fresh air to, uh, you know, kind of bring out the audibleness through saturation. After that, I use something like the uh, Kramer Master Tape to smoothen out the ad libs. Let's look. Yeah, so that's really just sharpening out those quick transients uh, that the fresh air is kind of like, uh, you know, inducing even more. After that, we have an SSLG channel just rolling off some of this, like uh, the gut, you know, the, the body of the ad -libs. We don't really need that mid-range. We just really need uh, a little bit of that top end. That's kind of like my main priority. After that, I use something like the Arvox using the same exact low level compression preset just to help pull the ad libs forward, give them a little density. And then after that, just a little bit of RQ, REQ to just roll off any sub frequency. Sometimes when you start compressing, you start to bring out more of that bottom end. So I just use that a little bit of that to make sure my ad libs wasn't too mucky. A stock H delay, a stock R verb, nobody cares, okay? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below if you guys did enjoy the video. I really do appreciate you guys. And if you are interested in the template, get it down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.